Hi guys, Ross here and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at this wine bottle project I worked on last year. I thought I would make a video about it, kind of going through the lighting as well as some redshift settings. So hopefully you guys find this video helpful. If you do, you already know what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment down below and let me know how much you enjoyed it. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the tutorial and we're gonna be starting off in Cinema 4D. So we're in Cinema 4D and this is the setup. Let me just play the render view and lock the camera and show you guys what's going on. So it's a pretty simple setup. We have this backdrop and we have seven lights, a couple from the side and this big one here. So I think what I should do is just run you guys through the lights. Uh, so let's just disable all of these and we're starting off with this HDR interior um, This is a HDR from Maxim Roz just some really good interior HDRs Which will give you some really nice reflections. So essentially that is what I'm using it for here uh, Just to get some really nice reflections on the rim not really lighting up the liquid But just adding some nice details to the bottle we then stack this with another HDR, this time using a studio one. And this time, this one is adding some reflections. So you can see we're getting some nice details along the bottom. It's really helping to bring out some of the embossings we have on this glass bottle. And then also bringing some nice reflections on this left hand side. I like to use HDRs because obviously they're based on real life environments. So you do get a lot more detail and photorealism with using these. So they're a really good way to inject a little bit more detail into your renders. We're then going to use some area lights and these are going to do the bulk of the work in terms of setting up the reflections and setting up that studio lighting. So we're starting off with this right reflection area light and this is using a softbox fabric texture. Can't quite remember where I got this from, but I'm going to have a look and try to get a link put in the description for you guys. If not, you can probably find a softbox texture online. This just gives you, again, just some more realistic results because you'll see some of those textures in the reflections. Again, just making it feel more photorealistic and more detailed. You know, it's just the little details that all start to add up and really make a world of difference. We then have a left reflection, essentially doing the same thing, using the same texture, but this one is slightly brighter. So when I'm creating the studio product renders, I like to have a key light, which essentially means your main light. And in this case, it's the left reflection. So this one's a little bit brighter than the right one. And this just helps to give the viewers a better sense of direction in terms of lighting, but also helps to add more contrast and interest to the final visual. So you can see we have a slightly brighter reflection on the left, which is then contrasted with this slightly darker one on the right. So just with these four lights alone, we're getting some really interesting reflections and refractions. You can start to see some of the liquid showing in the sides of the bottle here, but the main light is this backdrop liquid light here. So I'm actually gonna disable all these lights so far just so I can focus on this quickly. So I'm gonna zoom out and let's show you guys what's going on. So. When it comes to lighting these bottle renders, or kind of, I suppose, most um, renders involving glass and liquids, you actually light it in a different way that you probably would expect to. And that's by actually lighting the backdrop behind the bottle. So if I just enable this, you can see we're not getting any reflections. It's not lighting the label. It's actually focusing purely on the backdrop. And you can see if I go into the project tab, I've actually set it to only include the plane. So only include this object here. So what's actually happening is the light is hitting this plane and then that's bouncing and filling the bottle here. So it's giving us that really nice studio feel to the liquid. If I actually duplicate this light here and set this target to the bottle and let's just move it around to the back like this. You can see it's not actually given us the result we expect. It's not filling the bottle full of liquid. When it comes to glass objects or bottles and liquids, that the liquid actually shows up based on the background behind it and the environment. So if we're using a really bright background, like in this case where we're using this light and you know I've bumped it up by one stop in terms of exposure, so it's quite a bright light, this is gonna reflect and give us a really bright liquid. So if I just hop out of this camera and show you guys what's going on, you can see that we're using this gradient circle here. So it's giving us a really nice fall off. So we've got a really bright area in the middle. 
which is then diffusing as it goes outwards. Now, if we just take this other light which I made, um, I can kind of demonstrate how you could use this uh, in a different way. So if we bring this around to the side, we're getting a completely different look, but notice this again is purely just based on how it's lighting the background. If I exclude the background from the plane, only focus on the bottle, we're not getting any liquid results. We're purely just getting reflections. But you can see how I move this around. You can get completely different results. If you wanted to kind of just light the one side, you can do that just by moving it around like this. But yeah, if I just point this back towards the, the background, you can see as I move this around, we get some really interesting results. Um, you can see I've got bloom on, which is why it's getting a bit out of hand, but it kind of works in the opposite way that you would expect it to. So if we shine the light from the right hand side to the left, it's actually going to light um, this left hand side up brighter than the right. So it kind of hits the opposite side of the glass, which I guess does make sense when you think about it um, in terms of physicality. So yeah, you can really move this around, get different results. I used quite a front on area light, which gave me an even distribution. So yeah, hopefully that gives you guys a clear understanding of how to light liquid and just glass objects in general. Um, so if I just combine this with the rest of the lights, you can see we have a really nice result um, consisting of both reflections and refractions. And the only thing to do now is to use these two lights at the end just to add a bit more brightness to the labels. So we have this light on the right hand side here, which if I just zoom in and show you what's going on, um, it's just hitting it from the right. And again, we're using this softbox texture just to get a more softer and diffused finish. And then we have this final light here, which is called label fill, which is just filling in this kind of middle part here where it's quite dark. And this does kind of flatten the finish. We lose a little bit of the depth. However, in post-production, we can dial this back in. Um, and I'm excited to show you guys that in a bit. So there's one more thing I want to talk about, and that is the redshift settings. And this is to do with trace depth and light bounces in Redshift, and this can apply to kind of any render engine. Um, essentially, if we look at the render at the moment, you're starting to see these black areas down here. And this shouldn't be happening. This should be filling with color. And this at the moment is due to a lack of trace depth. So I'm gonna show you the render settings and kind of show you the before and after of what we can do to add a bit more detail to the liquid. So by default, you're gonna have these settings in your Redshift settings, and you wanna make sure you change this to advanced just so you can actually see these. Um, and if I just explain this quickly, hopefully this will make sense, and hopefully I'm explaining it correctly, but if you imagine the lights coming in from the right-hand side, hitting the outer wall of this glass, then hitting the inner wall, that would count as two light bounces because it has to interact with the outside of the glass. It then has to transfer its way in and hit the inner wall of the glass and essentially these stack up until you get um, your total number of refractions and in this case we're hitting the outer wall the inner wall it then has to pass through the liquid so that's three bounces already then has to hit the inner wall the other side of the bottle then the outer wall and then leave so that's five or six bounces there so by default we should have enough However, when you combine this with the reflection, which is set to four, and then the combined number, which is eight, we're capping the results. When in actual fact, what we want to do is get the maximum out of both of these settings. So we want to change this combined number to something like 10. Now you can see already, this has started to add more detail in here, and this is a bit grainy. So I have saved some snapshots of before and after. So. Here is the result with the default settings um, with the capped combined trace depth. And then when we bump it up to 10 and getting the maximum out of both reflection and refraction, we're starting to get more detail in the bottom of the bottle here. So we're getting some really nice details in the embossings, but also just in the refractions here. So it's worth checking out the redshift settings because you can help to add a lot more detail to your renders. And I only discovered this recently, so it's been really fun to kind of play with these settings and see what detail I can bring out in some of my older renders. So essentially that is the setup 
in Cinema 4D. I'm going to create a second video on like the post-production and if you guys wanted me to dive into the texturing in terms of the glass and the liquid, I can also make a separate video on that. But I think for this video I wanted to focus purely on lighting and kind of give you guys a deeper understanding of how I approach these types of projects. So hopefully you guys found the video helpful. If you did, you already know what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and drop a comment down below. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one. All right, peace.